Hello, everybody. Welcome to week three. We are, oh man, already two weeks into the quarter. Um, time's flying by. It seems like uh, we still have a lot of time left, obviously, but it's pretty awesome that we've already made it to week three. Um, and with week three, I've gotten the chance to look over that Google form that all of you submitted in week one, gave some time for uh, people to finish it in week two as well. Um, and just looking at the responses, it's really awesome. But I wanted to touch base on one thing or a few things actually. The first being that many of you mentioned that uh, you wanna get away from your computers, which I totally understand and can totally relate to. Uh, so going forward, I'm gonna try and make the weekly lectures a lot shorter, hopefully in that five to 10 minute range instead of that 20, 30 plus range that it was for week one and two. Uh, no promises on some of the content, but definitely going to try and do that. Um, and with some of the other things that you included in those Google Forms, um, I'll send out an announcement either today or some at some point later in the week. So look out for that uh, Google Class form announcement where I'm just going to kind of break down y'all's responses um, and just make it more clear as to what I'm going to try and include this quarter based off of what you all said. Um, so make sure that you're looking out for that in the weekly announcements. But I'm going to try and use this week and next week and then maybe a few weeks later on in the quarter to kind of cover some of those things that you all felt were important to you. Um, so keeping it shorter, check the announcements and using this week and some future weeks in the quarter to cover that content that you all had mentioned. But uh, for this week, week three's lecture, we're going over the guidelines for exercise and physical activity, as well as the five components of fitness. So we're gonna try and keep it short and sweet and we're gonna share screen and get rolling. So as I said, physical activity guidelines and the five components of fitness. First, we're gonna start with those physical activity guidelines. And who are we talking about when we're talking about our physical activity recommendations? Uh, what we're gonna be focusing on today is uh, uh, physical activity recommendations for healthy adults ages 18 to 65. So obviously those, uh, the physical activity recommendations change and they're adapted based off of health, physical ability, and your age range, and a few other things. So uh, specifically, we're focusing 18 to 65. So somewhere for a lovely participant, somewhere from about this range to probably the end of this range. So, uh, and that's important because that is all of you. All of y'all in this class are uh, healthy adults um, from what has been made clear to me and y'all are ages 18 to 65. So uh, this is important for you. I do want y'all to understand that, the, like I mentioned earlier, they do change and adapt, but this is what we're talking about today. Healthy adults ages 18 to 65. So what are the physical activity recommendations? Uh, and just so y'all know, as you can probably see in the title or the headline for these slides, these are coming from the American College of Sports Medicine and the CDC. So uh, good groups of experts and definitely uh, people we can trust when it comes to these recommendations. So part one of what are the physical activity recommendations when it comes to aerobic activity, the recommendation is that healthy adults are participating in at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity. So Week one in the benefits of exercise, we covered what, excuse me, we covered what uh, aerobic activity is, what aerobic uh, fitness is. Um, but as far as moderate intensity, you can see it's kind of hard to differentiate, but you can kind of tell this group of three over here, they are, uh, they're power walking. They're really in their mall walk, really feeling themselves over here, which is awesome. That's going to be more of your moderate intensity zone. So you're going for 150 minutes of that sort of aerobic activity a week. Or instead of that, you could get 60 minutes recommended, the vigorous intensity, which we're going into more of the jogging, running realm of things. Um, and that's 60 minutes according to the AC, ACSM and the CDC even recommends 75 minutes. So somewhere in that 60 to 75 minute range. Um, and lastly, if 
you don't want to do 150 minutes of moderate intensity or 60 minutes of vigorous intensity, you can do some equalizing combination of the two. So moving on, uh, physical activity recommendations for resistance training. It is recommended by the ACSM and the CDC that um, adults participate in resistance training activities two times per week at a minimum. And the ACSM defines these resistance training activities as ones that maintain or increase muscular strength and endurance for a minimum of two days per week. So another thing to note, this resistance training should work every major muscle group. So it should be balanced. You don't want to uh, just work out your legs three times a week or just work out your arms two to four times a week or however many times you wanna make sure that it's balanced. So the recommendation is that you're doing resistance training of every major muscle group, that's your legs, hips, back, abdomen, chest, shoulders, and arms at least two times a week. So working out every one of those muscle groups at least twice a week. All right, overall, according to the ACSM and the CDC, just in review, healthy adults ages 18 to 65 should participate in 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity or 60 to 75 minutes of vigorous intensi intensity or a combination of the two and two sessions of resistance training every week. Now, just reading that and hearing that, that's a lot of numbers and it's a little bit overwhelming and maybe 150 minutes is a lot or it's not enough, but here are some things that we can break it down into. And this is from the CDC. Example one, maybe you are just moderate intensity aerobic activity for 150 minutes. For example, 30 minutes a day, five days a week, you're going on a walk and you're doing your muscle strengthening activities. Example two, maybe instead of walking five days a week, you are jogging for a total of 75 minutes every week. And that can be split up too. Maybe that's, you know, two 40 minute sessions or four 20 minute sessions, things like that. And example three is just the splitting it up and mixing them. So maybe one day a week you walk and three days a week you jog or vice versa, things like that. As long as you hit your minutes of aerobic activity and then obviously your muscle strengthening activities are the same for every example as well. Okay, so that is a brief uh, overview of the recommendations for physical activity. And now we're going to cover the five components of fitness. And just an overview of the five components, they are cardiovascular endurance, muscular strength, muscular endurance, flexibility, and body composition. So the five components of fitness, y'all have probably heard of them before. If you can't remember what they are, obviously right, they're right there, but you've probably, you can probably remember hearing about the five components of fitness. Uh, it's a big part of physical education. Uh, so maybe you heard that going to school when you're growing up. Um, but at the end of this, after this overview, we're going to go over why it's important and uh, why it's included in our topics here today. So breaking it down a little bit, cardiovascular endurance is the body's ability via the heart, lungs, and blood vessels to utilize and transport oxygen. In other words, how well the body gets oxygen from outside the body to muscles that need it to work. So uh, muscles require oxygen to work um, or to, uh, in order for muscles to do the work that is required, oxygen is required. Obviously that's why we have our heart, lungs and blood vessels and all of that stuff. So I'm uh, not gonna get too much into the physio uh, physiology but this is just a general overview of what cardiovascular endurance is, what the cardio system is. And in week one, we kind of covered what those aerobic activities do, what they are, and how they enhance cardiovascular endurance. Muscular strength is the amount of maximal force that a muscle can produce. So this little fella, his name is Hafthor Bjornsson. He's from Iceland. And he set a world record deadlift of 1,104.52 pounds. So this muscular, this is an example of muscular strength because it is a maximal force that is only being produced one time. 
He's not just going up there and lifting it over and over again. This is his uh, maximal exertion to produce a maximal force one time. And that is what muscular strength is defined as. On the other side of that, you have muscular endurance, which is the ability of a muscle or group of muscles to repeatedly contract against a force over a period of time. So this isn't just a muscle performing an action one time. This is the muscle's ability to perform that action and contract over and over and over again, over a period of time against an external force. So keeping up with the theme of the slide, this is a clip art lady, and she is not known to have any sort of sit-up world record, um, but she is an important part of our lecture. So shout out to our clip art lady here. Uh, flexibility. This is the range of motion of a joint or a series of joints. So right here in this little diagram, our skeleton, Escalito, we'll call him, is uh, stretching his psoas and his quadriceps. So he's got a he's got a group of muscles that he's actually stretching here. Um, but as you can see, or you could probably tell, if this quadricep is not as flexible. That's going to limit Escalito's knee flexion and his leg is going to be a little more straight. So instead of his ankle being back here, it would probably be a little farther out more in this area if the quadriceps were tighter. On the other side with their, or same side, but the psoas up here, um, if the psoas was a little more tight, the hips would probably not be tilted as far back. So uh, they would be tilted forward a little bit more. So just a little uh, little demonstration of how flexibility works um, and why this is the definition of it. Lastly, body composition. We've gone over body comp before, uh, but it's just the percentage of fat mass and fat-free mass that makes up the body. So little percentage breakdown here. We've gone over that before, like I said, so not gonna dive too in depth here. Um, and then, why are the five components important? So health is not one dimensional. And to be truly fit and to be truly physically healthy, one must be healthy in all five components, not just a few. So for example, if you have, uh, and you see this a lot, you have a, a person at the gym who, or at least growing up, I had examples of people who could lift heavy weights or who could bench a lot. And they thought that they were really fit because they could bench, you know, high quantities of weight, but they probably couldn't go run a mile if they tried to. So as it says here on the slide, health is not one dimensional. And that's something that I really wanna harp on, especially in the first coming weeks of this class. I know we've covered a lot of fitness and just generally in the first couple of weeks, but um, this is just something that I want you all to be reminded of as we are learning about weight training and as we will continue to, uh, as our scope narrows and we specify more in on weight training specifically as the quarter progresses, I want you all to know that that is just a simple little piece of health and wellness, um, and physical health, especially. So uh, weight training does affect all five components here, but my reason for including it this week is one, it is a part of our initial physical testing and the five components as you all move out of this class and into your own exercise routines in the future. Um, just remember to hit all five components. If you truly want to work on your health and your fitness, then don't just focus in on one little piece of fitness and health, but remember that it is a broader spectrum. And if you try to hit all five components that we talked about today, then you have a pretty solid blueprint to work off of. So that is our week three lecture. Hopefully it's a little shorter. Um, and yeah. I hope that week three goes well outside of this class. But as always, if you have any questions, please reach out. Uh, any comments, concerns, please let me know. Y'all have been great in uh, communicating with me and letting me know things that need to be known. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of all the work that y'all have been putting forth so far. And 
I appreciate you taking the time to view this and I will uh, look forward to seeing what you all turn in this week. So good luck and uh, have a good week.